Hi everyone, in this video, I'll show you how you can synchronize these four Phoenix cameras in free running mode and trigger them through a Jupyter Lab notebook thanks to the power of IEEE 1588 Precision Time Protocol, also known as PTP. Head over to our thinklucid.com Jupyter Lab Resource Center website and make sure to download our free PTP Sync demo zip file here. The link will be in the description below. This zip file will have the notebook files you need to follow along. Now, while I put all the hardware together, I'm going to briefly go over the IEEE 1588 Precision Time Protocol, or PTP for short. Almost all industrial electronic devices have internal clocks, and machine vision cameras are no exception. PTP allows the devices on a network to synchronize these clocks. Now, whether the devices are connected to switches, network interface cards, or a combination of both, the PTP algorithm works out the delays, measures it, and compensates for it. In our case, the cameras are connected to a four-port network network interface card. We'll use PTP to synchronize the internal clocks of the four Phoenix cameras, which will allow us to trigger them to take an image within microseconds of each other. This will all be done through a Jupyter Labs notebook, which is conveniently embedded in our ArenaView GUI. One of the major benefits is that you don't need to hardwire an external GPIO cable to all the cameras to get a hardware trigger. In other words, by using just the single Ethernet cable connection to the camera, you can transfer data from the cameras, power the cameras through PoE, and now synchronize trigger the cameras thanks to PTP. Now that the hardware side of things is all set up, the first thing we want to do is bridge all of our network connections with cameras. We can do this in Windows, under Control Panel, selecting Network and Internet, and then Network Connections. For this example, our Phoenix cameras are connected to the four ports on the Realtek PCIe network interface card. Right now, the ports are each treated as four separate networks. And for PTP to work, we need to bridge all four, which basically allows those connections to communicate with each other and function as a single network. To do this, select the Ethernet connections, right click, and select Bridge Connections. The ports will reinitialize, and when they're done, you'll see the status change to Enabled Bridge. Plus, a new network bridge network will show now as well. Now we can move on to the PTP Jupyter Notebook. So let's launch the ArenaView GUI. We can see the four Phoenix cameras are detected, but don't enable them here. We have to enable them with the Jupyter Notebook code. So let's open up Jupyter Lab, located under View in the menu. A command line window will show up, and here's where your password will be if this is the first time you've launched Jupyter Labs in ArenaView. Take that password and enter it into the password field and click Login. Now, the zip file you downloaded from our Jupyter Lab Resource Center had two files. Navigate to where you extracted them and open up the notebook file ptp underscore camera underscore demo dot ipynb. You can click the fast forward button to run the notebook right away. I'm selecting restart here because I've actually ran it already and I want to refresh all the variables. The notebook will execute all the code blocks, but before I show you the images, I'll quickly explain what they do. Now the first block will import all of our dependencies. Block 2 sets the frame rate and window height. Block 3 prepares a camera list. Block 4 to 7 connect the camera via the serial number. You'll want to replace those with your camera's serial numbers. Block 8 sets the images to only show when they're made. Block 9, this is part of creating four threads. The start underscore streaming function, which will be called in code block 13. Block 10 is our display images function. This will get called four times, one for each camera. Now there's some logic to having it displayed on screen, such as if a user closes one window, they will all close. Code block 11, this is the first part of the PTP negotiation for the cameras. We could let them auto-negotiate, but instead we're forcing camera zero to be the master clock and setting the three others to slaves. You don't have to do it this way, but we thought it better for readability of the code. This will also create printouts of what's going on for better clarity. Block 12 sets the cameras to be ready in PTP sync mode and sets the frame rate, which we set in block 2. Block 13 starts the threads, calls the start underscore streaming function that we had in block 9. Block 14 gets the image data and copies it to a PC buffer. We're basically offloading the images from the camera. If not, we would just be streaming data and there would be no image for future processing. Block 15 takes the image from that buffer. Block 16 is a helper function. The get underscore image function will call block 14 four times in separate threads. Block 17 displays the images. 
Block 18 has two additional user settings you can change. Here you could also add more camera settings you'd like to adjust if you wanted to. And finally, Block 19 displays the images along with a printout of the timestamps. You can see that the timestamps of the four images are very close, with a trigger accuracy of a few microseconds. From a visual perspective, the images look exactly the same. This free PTP JupyterLab notebook should give you a good introduction on how to set up PTP with our cameras. There were other ways we could have written the code, but our main focus was for readability and clarity for the user, so feel free to experiment and tweak the code how you want. We also have other resources that explain in more detail how to set up PTP with our cameras with those links in the description below. All of Lucid cameras support PTP specifically IEEE 1588 2008 standard, also known as PTPv2. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and stay lucid.